Hey, hey, this is Gnome, Silver X160, I'm the best in the West, except for Morgrave. Anyhow, yeah, so we got a new clan out. Um, I believe it is called the Shun clan, Shun. Um, tough pronunciation, but it's basically Wukong. It is the Monkey King and Monkey Queen. So they are an assassin clan, and they look really awesome. I think I like him, his appearance more. Look at these scrolls right here. He can use to kind of tap into some of that magic. He's got these like this thing on his hip here, this mask type thing. It looks awesome, and it matches the opposite shoulder. Uh, the belt is nice and detailed. The the leggings, man, look at that, the back there, that looks awesome, this character looks really neat, his staff, uh, legendary cudgel, um, it can extend to pulverize people, so let's see what it could do here, um, first, let's do a little preview, whoa, landed on, whoa, pulled it out of his ear, and he's plays around on it that's what monkeys do that was really cool that must be the wow made it huge that was awesome cool preview fun all right so at max level skills we'll start with the passive um haughty sage normal attacks have an 80 percent chance to deal double damage and ignore the enemy's fortitude so the first thing i think of when I hear that, is Righteous, or uh, Furious Thunderbolt, which is the Thunder Lord's clan trait, and it has a certain percent chance to add damage, so I don't know how the, if they'll stack or how that will all work, but the point is, if they do work together, and it ignores the enemy's fortitude, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage with his normal attack. So with that being said, you're going to probably want to get agile on him, make him attack really fast. Uh, of course, brutal. Um, anything to really boost those normal attacks. So we'll talk more about traits once we figure out the rest of them. So for every three normal attacks, so you want um, attack speed. Always attack speed with that. Whenever it's like every so many, like get them attacking so fast. Every three normal attacks made the champion gain 60% lifesteal and the strength is increased by 25% over the next six seconds. So 60% lifesteal and strength up by 25% over six seconds. That's a pretty good duration and that's every three normal attacks. So it should technically kind of be on him nonstop. He should be attacking so fast that, like, that should always be on him. So, uh, and I know I'm, I've kind of played with it a little bit, honestly, but his crown lights up. He gets this golden crown whenever that procs. So it looks really cool. Um, all right, two is active now. Uh, we have Vaja Cudgel. Slams the ground with the Colossus Cudgel inflicting stunned enemies in the straight path and dealing damage equal to 500% of the caster's strength. Okay, so first of all, let's break this down. It inflicts stun. It doesn't say how long. I'm assuming maybe a second or half a second, maybe. Uh, in a straight path and dealing damage equal to 500% of the caster's strength, which is more than most champions have on their active. And this could potentially hit all five of the enemies. So if it does, guess what that means? All five times 500%, it's 2,500% strength damage to the enemy. That's awesome. Um, plus an additional damage equal to 10% of the enemy's max con, up to 1,500% of the caster's strength. Afterward, instantly moves behind the weakest enemy champion. Wow, there, there's a lot to unpack there. So, first of all, he slams the ground and his bow stick, or his cudgel, expands. It stuns everybody in that path. And directly in front of him. I don't know if it's around him, but I know directly in front of him. 
Dealing damage equal to 500, so that's a lot, plus damage equal 10%. So, say the enemy has 100 million con. Um, 10% of that would be 10 million added on top of all the extra, all that 2,500 up to. Um, but it's up to 1,500%. So, 15 times strength, assuming your strength is... 3 million 15 times 3 million is 45 million so the cap on this is going to be the enemy's max con mostly so i uh, just assume you're always going to be going against about a uh, 10 million but this will hit tanks this will butcher tanks that's nice anything that does max con damage is worth it so and then afterwards he moves behind the weakest enemy champion I've gone into the future, and I know that this isn't working. It's actually similar to Broken, like the um, female Soul Reaper. So they jump behind. Instead of the weakest target or the target with the highest strength, they actually leap behind the just whatever enemy they're targeting. So that's obviously a broken mechanic um i wish it would be fixed in the other champion so that it could potentially work correctly in this champion because uh, also the kivak female kivak alt is not fixed either that's still broken waiting on a fix for that that'd be nice for people because then it would make her viable in late game play um okay so let's go to his ultimate dharma's reign Summons a Dharma's image that descends upon the enemy and attacks all enemy targets within a certain radius. Dharma's image lasts 9 seconds. Dang! 9 second ult is insane. So it summons this thing and attacks all enemy targets. Bam! Within a radius. During this period, whenever the champion suffers a control effect, it will be nullified. Wow. And the Dharma's image immediately launches an attack forward. Cool. So someone tries to crowd control them. He gets immune to it, and the Dharma kind of retaliates, um, does like a repost. Um, the control immunity has a cooldown of 1.5 seconds. Okay, so can potentially get it off one, two, uh, six times, right? Two times three, yeah, six times. The Dharma's image cannot be attacked. Oh, so it's just there. While the Dharma's image is present, the champion's attack speed is increased by 35%. That's awesome. Each attack, and remember, you want the attack speed, because remember this every three normal attacks, so any attack speed's good. So, what is that? 35%. Each attack of the Dharma's image deals damage equal to 600% of the caster's strength, plus a dish, more additional damage equal to 18% of the target's max con. To all enemy targets within range, up to 200, or sorry, 2,000% of the caster's strength. Wow. That's each attack. So even whenever he first attacks, that does that. So you want to remember, it wasn't limited off of this guy's strength. Remember, it, the limiting factor is the uh, enemy's max con. So it depends kind of if you were going against some big whales or people that are further along in the game, this guy would be right up your alley. So if you notice you're always against harder opponents and you're not able to just do enough damage, this guy will do it for you. Look at him. He's insane. Um, so let's get back in here. He gets attack speed. He attacks for a radius when it first comes out it's for 9 seconds. Each time it attacks, it does 600% of the strength plus, like, additional max con. So that guy does that in his active and his ult. Very interesting. And with that, the attack speed causing this to go off more and more life steal, increased strength, uh, which, in this case, I think that the strength mostly just helps him do more damage, not so much the max con stuff because remember the max con is going to be limited off the enemy's max con not his uh his strength really because it's so high in the other one uh and it ignores the enemy's fortitude and it just does a ton of damage so 
potential uh, first 10 second kill kind of champ. All right, that's really cool. <clears throat> Let's look at her now. And then we'll look at uh, the clan trait. So here she is. She looks really cool. I like the spikes there. I don't think those can hit her. Uh, her staff is just a little more simple. The cool runes looks like maybe on it. Two ends. Cool belt there. It's got kind of one of those faces. Just a little more put together. Her hair looks really cool. And I think that's how you can distinguish the two. She also has her monkey tail. And she has her two scrolls as well. So she's going to be doing some magic. She looks more magical honestly. Alright. Passive. Spirit away. When the champion's constitution is lower than 80, 50, and 20% for the first time in combat, the champion slips into the void for 5 seconds and creates a decoy the last 15 seconds. That's a long time, 15 seconds. The decoy inherits all base stats of the champion and can cast skills. Wow, okay, I'm excited to see what skills are if the decoy can basically just become her. On the void, the champion, so remember, in the void for 5 seconds... While in the void, the champion becomes invincible, gains 80 energy per second. So that's a total of 400 energy over 5 seconds. But is unable to move or take actions. So for for each 80, 50, and 20%, she just gets a little life boost. So quite defensive. Might be good for, against all these teams that are making early game sprint um, builds. Which is which is cool. It's a good build, uh, but this would kind of counter that a little bit. In that it, um, she gets five seconds, three times, so that's fifteen seconds right there. So I don't think she's really dying in the first fifteen seconds or so. You know, uh, probably even longer than that so guaranteed length and you know who this would remind me that would go well with a little synergy um the new dragon female she just seems to live a long time she extends the battle well i feel like this champion would also extend the battle and look at this there's a decoy so she's basically keeping her damage up so whatever her abilities are in her base stats the decoy is the exact same what I really question is, does it mimic the traits? It says base stats and can cast skills. So that makes me think it's similar to like the male bloom in that the illusions or the decoys, the clones, don't get any of the traits. So say you put fearsome or enfeebling, I'm guessing the clones do not get that ability. We'll, we'll try to check it out though. I'll basically put, um, what is it, uh, tardiness. If you put tardiness on a champion, you can see when it slows the enemy. So just check to see if the clones are slow in the enemy. If they are, this will be one of the strongest champions in the game. I can tell you that because you put fearsome on there, enfeebling, tardiness, any of those. And those champions are just turning the enemy to mush basically okay so she gets a decoy um she gains energy she's immune for five seconds and then after she launches a sudden strike from the void against the weakest enemy dealing damage equal to 80 percent of the champion's strength i wonder if that's broken like the male we'll find out though so she goes into this void she pops out and does a quick strike to quote the weakest enemy is that the enemy with the least con least strength like i don't even know please uh here's our active shadow pin inflicts inflict immobilized on the target for four seconds four seconds significant uh when the immobilized effect expires so i'm guessing they can't do anything for four seconds which is awesome uh deals additional damage to the target Equal to 60% of the total damage received during the effect period. So for 4 seconds, if that champion receives 100 million damage during that period. So for 4 seconds, which is, it could happen. 
Um, they'll take an additional 60 million at the end of that four seconds. That's insane. Um, when cast repeatedly upon the same target, the immobilized effect duration won't stack, but the bonus damage effects can stack. Oh, wow. So think of this. If she, I, I know her ult gives her two illusions, so you want to use that as much as possible. But when you have those illusions, they'll cast the... Remember, they cast her skills. So that's three of these shadow pins. And say the same target gets all three. Like, say there's only one target, even. And say you're fighting a boss. And so it'll basically do... Uh, 120 plus 60 is 180 percent of the total damage that that thing or that creature received um, at the end of four seconds. So imagine if you're fighting a boss, the the clones can only throw it on the boss. So they throw it on the boss, and you do ka a billion damage during that time. Then it takes 180%. So, um, what did I say? A billion? So, that would be a billion and 800 million. Like, 1.8 billion. It'll just hit them with that at the end of the four seconds. So, that amplifies your damage. Insane. And think about it. If Impair works with the clones as well which i assume it would or at least when they use the active ability then that's even more damage that the enemy will receive when it goes off do you understand they'll have impair on them that'll go off and they'll receive that much more impair damage it'll be really good so think of impair on her it could look pretty cool too the big old horns coming out of her head Interesting, I would think. Uh, uh, Impair is the Kivak clan trait. So, I really like her so far. I like her a lot. I think she has some crazy, good, unique build potential. But, the male is more plug and play. Think of the Akuna clan. The male was just ready to go. But the female requires a lot of vigor, a lot of strategy, team planning. And I think maybe the same goes for this. Um, but we'll talk traits and synergies and all that stuff later. Let's get to our alt. Pious Manis Manifestation. Creates de two decoys that last 15 seconds, which is an eternity in this game. Think about it. Her alt will be back up already uh, before that 15 seconds happens. In fact, we'll do some testing with the uh, putting her in the P1 position with female Ho on the team. And female Ho will give her enough energy. We'll see if she produces two more. If she can get her ult back off uh, in time. So we'll see if that works. That'll be really cool. The decoys inherit all base stats of the champion. And can cast skills. Just like before. Uh, afterward the decoys charge at random enemy targets. So they... They appear, um, and then they just charge at two random enemy targets, whoever, back line, front line, dealing damage equal to 750% of the caster's strength. That's a lot. So that's 150, uh, or 1,500 percent of the caster's strength total. And increasing the target's damage taken. There's another damage taken uh, boost, you know. She's going to go really well with uh, Mel Water and Sun. Um, so, increasing the target's damage taken by 35% for 4 seconds. For 4 seconds. Wow. That's really good. Alright. This effect can't or can stack so uh meaning if you get off multiple alts oh oh because they use the skills uh oh oh if they hit the same target 
Because say you're fighting a boss, then it'll be receiving 70% more, um, sorry, getting texts. I need to turn that off when I do videos, but it messes with the stream or whatever it is, the video, I don't know. So for four, this effect can't stack. So think about this. Uh, two decoys both hit a boss. That's 70% more damage for four seconds. And then if they cast Shadow Pin during that time, uh, never mind. It, Shadow Pin would need to go first. Yeah, and then these guys. And then, ah. Uh, It'd be tough to really plan her stuff. We'll have to see how she does in battle. Um, but it seems like a really cool ult. Keep all these abilities in mind. And um, I'm about to summon, but um, I actually already did. Here's their clan trait. Sure as Avatar. This is the level 18 of it. It says, when casting an active skill or ultimate attack, Increases the champion's critical damage by 33.1% for 3 seconds. Stacks up to 2 layers. And so remember, when her illusions are going off too, I'm assuming that they're getting that effect. So, um, say you have the 2 decoys and him, and they all cast the active. And that would put this on it by 66.2%. Critical extra damage. Um, and that's going along with the, if you recall, the passive. Which is doing double damage, ignoring fortitude. This champion has a lot of built-in synergy. Okay. So, that's the clan trait. Might be worth putting it on some people. So, um, let's go ahead. We've talked about the skills. We've talked about the clan trait. Now, let's go ahead and jump over to some summonings. All right. Let's start in on these summons. This is going to be good. Hoping for the Mythic Female, because I'd like to kind of work on both of them a little bit. I have a ton of Assassin Fodder, so this should go well. All right, here we go. First run. Give me a times five companion. Come on. Let's make this a nice companion run, shall we? Ooh, I have the cigarette companion, but I don't have it up to mythic. So, but there's the times five. Good way to start off. I needed the female Akuna. I need the male Silken Crown. Um, kind of bummer on some of these other ones, but they'll help me move traits around. All right. That was one. Here we go. Come on, another times five. Let's do this. Come on. I uh, didn't need the L's of death, but look, I got a legendary of the female. That She looks awesome, man. What else did I need in here? Uh, the male Lume. I needed him. Uh, early other than the legendary version of her, that was kind of a poor draw. I'm just going to go ahead and... Nah, I'll get that in a sec. We'll go ahead and summon some more. All right, here we go. Come on. Times five companion parts. You know you want to do it. There's a times one. I can do that. There's a male fodder. Um, did I need anything else in here? I did not. That's a bummer. But uh, you never bulk at companion parts. Let's go. Come on. Times five. Let's do this. Oh, a couple of them there. Um, but there's a male. There's a female. Um, we didn't need anything other, so that was a pretty good draw, I'll take that, come on times five, let's do this, or mythic female, ooh, that was rough, that was a, that was a really rough one, um, ouch, but we have gotten the legendary female, that's helpful, oh, times five, yeah, that's how you do it, um, also a male, pool from it that's really nice oh those were a couple really good ones let's go some more i don't have a ton of shards this this one so come on uh there's the female there's the male um i don't think i really needed anything else there come on companion parts do it come on oh that's maybe the worst pool we got one female fodder, but the rest is pretty unnecessary. 
All right, here we go. Come on. Times five. Oh, we got another female. Hmm, that's no good. Female Oros Mythic. Uh, maybe the spider silken crown blue will be good for marriages. Um, oh, come on. Don't do me this way. Give me some of those times fives. Or give me just any fodder that I could use for these guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's there's one. I'll take it. See, but no fodder. Like, no fodder's coming with these summons. That's kind of a little disappointing. There's a big one. Oh, the... Wait, I have them at Mythic. But the female right here... The female scorched. I need her really bad with a build I'm doing. So that actually is really nice. Two companion parts. Uh, male fodder. This is one of my better pools, actually. It solved a lot of problems for me. A lot of issues. I needed that so I don't have to level that companion. Um, male Azon is worthless. Mythic for me. There's a male fodder. That's good. All right, let's keep rolling. Come on, give me a times five. Come on, I've been, I've been good. There's a female fodder. And as I said, I'll kind of, I know we're doing an event, but I'll probably level them both up because it doesn't, I don't know if I'll, I don't think I'll be able to get the companion. Um, I don't know if I really needed anything from that pool. We got three more big 10 pools. There's a times five. Yeah. That's how it's done. And a female pool. I actually needed the male, um, I think I need a blue male Devela. Um, all right, and that put us at 170. We'll do two more pulls, come on, another times five. There's a times one, okay, not going to complain. Uh, female gold tongue, always need gold tongue, male or female. I have a lot of their abilities on my people. All right, and that was probably one of the most worthless draws of the whole time the male lume is doing all right so let's go ahead and pull our little presents here there's a times five here's one of both of them there's the male there's the female there's another times five that's nice male and the female and this does give me the mythic male at least i'm excited there's a times five there's the mythic male and during this event, I'm hoping to get to 220 summons for that next times five. If I could somehow get to 300, we will have the might during this, but I don't know if I'll be able to get enough summons. But I would love to get the mythic female. I was hoping to pull her today, but hey, you get what you get, what you can. You enjoy what you got. Um, cool. So I'm going to have to do some a little bit of prep work on these two. And I did get the legendary female. So that makes me feel a little bit more confident. Uh, so let us let me go ahead and get these buffed up. We'll do some uh, gameplay. We'll talk about the abilities in the game. Uh, this will be a lot of fun. Yeah, I feel like I never really get the mythic females much anymore when I summon. Maybe it's just when I summon or the random number generator, but it's really annoying because I really wanted a mythic female, but we got the legendary. It's better than nothing. <clears throat> so I went ahead and boosted up the champs a little bit with whatever I have. I still have plenty of fodder. I just don't have fodder of them. I just ha I have tons of assassin stuff, but I didn't. You guys saw I didn't draw enough on this. And I did a couple more summons. Um, I got enough to get him up to that 10 star, level 400, which is a nice spot. I like I like 11 star because then you can get all the skills up to orange book, you know. So you don't have to use any orange book. But you could still see their abilities and everything. And maybe as I get some more summoning stones over the week, I'll get more. And um, it'll be much better. Because I want to get them both to 11 star. Because then I can really decide which one I want to do more. But this is what we got. Let me give you an introduction. He's got 8 Vigor. Um, 2.383 million strength. 44 million con. 
uh, almost um, a million armor there. So he's doing all right, mostly for my celestial bonds. But I got agile level 22 on him, honorable 22. I can only get 21 brutal. I didn't have a 22 brutal, I don't think. Um, and then I tried to get pure heart on him for PvP purposes, but I ended up getting cutthroat, and that'll just work for our testing. Um, for the equipment, he's got three pieces of refined gear, no no weapon refinement. I uh, got a couple gems in there for the ones that are level 10, um, and then one's not quite level 10 yet. So that's what we got for the mail. Oh yeah, and skills are level 10. So they're not as great as they possibly could be. And I think that a lot of the skills with the later characters that were released um, scale way better. Like all aspects of the ability scales better. So I, I like that about it. So for her, I got her up to 9 star, level 360. Uh, she's almost got 2 million strength. She's at 1.86. She's got 50 million uh, con because I got energetic on her and then almost a million armor which is 0.836 million uh, for the traits that she's only legendary I got level 22 energetic which is just helpful keeps her alive longer um, and while she's alive longer she can hit those um, the 80 percent and just extend the battle a little longer I only had level 20 honorable I tried to get 22 on her but it didn't work and then I got 22 Agile instead of Brutal, which I would have, I was trying to get Brutal. It was a lower level than 22, but that's what I got. For her equipment, she's got two pieces of Refined, and she's got two others uh, that aren't, but they, you know, there's some lower level stuff here. No gems in her stuff. Um, and then she's got all level 9 abilities. So, just a heads up. And then I told you the clan trait, so that's going to be pretty cool to to test out. And without further ado, let's go check out these abilities that we talked about earlier in the video. So I got Dungeon Descent up to a good level for them, you know, approximately. So here we go. Here's my, my tester team. And so let's check this out real quick. So... We got a female hoe feeding the P1 position energy. So I want to see how many decoys we can get out with the female. Actually, I should do the male first, but let's, we'll do something different. So uh, she popped them out, and they jumped, and they went back. Now the people... Oh, wow. And then, okay, let's watch when that goes off. See how much damage happens after that four seconds. Oh, wow, that chunked them pretty good. And they're completely immobilized for that four seconds. And each of... Oh, whoa. There we go. Look at all those things. How many was that? Was that four or six or something? Let's see damage. So she's doing the same damage as female Ho at level 360, which is... I mean, that should be expected. Probably should be expected to do a bit more. But I also don't have Brutal on her. She's not loaded up. And that ult matters like she does that strength based damage so it is important um let's try it on the boss here real quick so just to get a longer battle see oh sorry i have times two on so she just used the active she hasn't hit 80 percent yet because female hoes healing her up uh there she just used her ultimate and they flew back and they hit random targets she did too so I thought it was just the other ones, but she did as well. Um, there's some more illusions. Look at this. There's five of her out there right now. That is so awesome. That is really fun. And then so, and you just see her using her active all over the place, these, these people. And imagine if it was the full four seconds. Like mine's not the full four seconds, which would be even stronger. And it looks really cool with female hoes active as well. It looks like all these symbols going everywhere, just popping everybody. It's really neat. Um, so let's reiterate a couple things. So when she gets at a certain constitution percentage, 80, 50, 20, I think it was, she creates that decoy and goes into, 
we didn't really see that. So I'm going to try to see if we can see that, okay? So we'll take out female hoe. Uh, we'll put her down here. Let's see, because she'll probably hit 80%, I, I, I imagine. I want to see that other decoy. Okay, there's her active right there. And they took a little bit more damage because she didn't do a ton during it. So, all right. There, she just went immune and created the decoy. Oh, there she went, and then she popped out and attacked the person. Now she used her ult and created the decoys, and see all the actives going off? And she's hurting, though. Okay, there's another active going off. It might have been multiple actives all hitting her, so remember... Oh, yeah, it was. You saw the Ignis, like, take a big chunk of damage after that. Oh, they got immobilized. All the illusions out there. And remember... This is what slower energy gain. She's popping out decoys, illusions. Here come some more illusions. And then they're going to... Oh, she's going to die, though. She's going to die. Yep, a little too much for her. Uh, so, notice the illusions are still fighting after she dies. So, if you are have a close battle, then you at least get the benefit of those illusions still fighting a little bit after she dies. So, we'll just go ahead and resurrect. And let's let's do this again. Let's pop in the whole team. Woohoo! And let me explain a couple things real quick. Why I'm setting the team up this way. Um, no, I won't. And we'll get to the male, but I want you to see the female came in. She's putting the immobilized on it. And so, oh, wow. And I think it, it killed the champ that took the damage. Wow. That's pretty cool synergy. But the point is, is I got her healed up. So I, I put her with the whole team a little bit. So this is an easy battle. We'll put her up in the... Uh, actually, let's do this. Let's try this out. See if we can just get some better video. All right. Esther Rear puts the immunity on her. She put that... She just doesn't do enough damage to make it significant right now. So, there's her ult. She pops out two of them. And even her. So, all three of them run over to a random enemy and and get in there and... Uh, cause more damage to be done. Up to 35% at max skill level. So she's about to ult again. He's been protecting her really well. Oh, yep. They, they all ran off to the random targets. Oh, and she got down to 80%. So she had the decoy too. That might have been her jumping out. Um, oh, wow. This is hectic. So imagine a team, which is what I'm going to build, is her with a male bloom. They're both assassins, so that makes it kind of fun because as you get the same guardian stone, they both become progressively better. And so, oh, nice. There's those. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that. All three had the immobilize on them. And then when I remember when it goes off, they take a certain amount of a percentage of the damage they took during that period. So imagine a male water and sun pulsing once or twice for that four seconds. And then all of a sudden, you know, 10 million damage a pulse, that's significant amount of extra damage. Not to mention the clones in there. I think she's going to be a really fun champion. I, I think she has kind of more of a, well, maybe plug and play. Like, she seems to amplify the damage for any group, which is always needed in the current in the current situation. So, a really fun champ. Hard to see everything. Hopefully, you all kind of got what you wanted out of that. Because, yeah, she's just... It's hard to tell when she gets to that percentage. Let's try one more time here. So, we're looking for her when she gets 80%. She goes into the void for five sec. Oh, there she is. She's in the void. And then watch. There, she just popped out right now behind him. Cool. See, and I don't think she went to the weakest target. I think she just 
popped out behind her current target. So maybe that needs to be addressed. So it's about to happen again. First she did she did that and then come on do your lower level D oh there's yes she's immune and then she's gonna pop out here pretty soon. There she is she popped out nice <laughs> what a cool champ I like this one it's a bummer I didn't pull mythic just because and I don't think I'll be able to get it until I um get the companion and then level up the companion it's going to be a long process but she's really cool um yeah i'm i'm wondering if some lifesteal would do well on her or as long as she just has a healer she'll probably be fine so if you want to put her with the male water and sun and then remember i think if she uses her immobilize on people that affects male water and sun's um passive so that's pretty monstrous as well. So she died. Um, let's go ahead and get her uh, boosted up. And then we'll kind of swap over to the male and give him a highlight real quick. Um, I think you all will all appreciate that. Get her in. There we go. Esther Rear protecting her. So now she has the control. Resist. Oh, she might have knocked it off when she used her ult. Um, oh, no, she had just moved. The positioning is so hard to keep track of which one's her and which one's an illusion. Isn't it with the male bloom? They're kind of different colors, so you can tell which one is the original. Hers is, like, very similar. All right, so I have the male stronger. Let's give him a shot. So he comes out and boom. Oh, that's cool. And remember, he's broken. So he goes behind, not the weakest right now, but the whatever his target is. And see that little crown that's forming over his head? That's the, that's the life steal and the strength increase for six seconds. See, it's gone right now, but he's got his ult, which is the Dharma right behind him. And so if anyone tries, that's that's when you use it. The hand slaps down. Uh, but whenever he get, tries to get CC'd, it's a little different. Dang, his active is really cool. All right, so we kind of need to get him healed up a little bit. And we want to see what that ult can do. Because when he gets CC'd, this ult is supposed to repost and do damage towards the... Uh, attacker so let's just go ahead and do lume little lume back here in the back um hopefully he'll pull every there we go so there's the all that does the smash at the beginning and then when he does his active it stuns people so you can kind of see that stun and it moved him it's supposed to move him to the weakest target but it just puts him behind his current target so that's broken um, he's getting healed from Lume. Oh, there it was. Did you see the hand? It kind of pushed a fire, a wave of fire at the enemies when they tried to crowd control him. That was really cool. So, and you know, with most current teams, everyone is crowd controlling all the time. And so, like, I, I have a team that's all crowd control. So, think about that. This thing would go off six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Six times this hand would go off. And each time, wasn't it like 600% strength damage or something like that? Something ridiculous. So let's, uh, let's give this another shot. And don't forget, he gets 60% life steal. So the stronger his auto attacks are, the more he's going to be doing this because his passive is that double damage. Um, and you can see how he's got the crown above his head. It's like staying above his head. And that's the lifesteal. That's the strength. That's like the, the whole deal there. Coming to you from down below. So, yeah, I, I think his ult is a lot of fun. Like, she's really fun because she multiplies, which is really cool. But he... I think he's more plug and play. His ult is going off constantly. Let's do this. Let's make sure his ult is really going off a lot. She's going to give him uh, her passive. 
So, and then he's going to just, and she's going to give him a nice heal. He used his active and stunned him. There's his ult. Come on, someone try to CC him because it'll shoot back. Come on, try to CC him. Do it, do it. Look how often he's getting this ult in, though. He's like just, it's slamming constantly. Oh, man. See, she with it being nine seconds and just female hoes, uh, passive this thing is almost going off constantly so as long as you can last that first 10 seconds with a female hoe you can really go a long time so let's try it on the boss real quick let's see if he can keep it up the whole time i just want to see some cc go against him so we could see that repose some more because in pvp it's going to be much more evident look at this boom i love that Oh, there it was. Did you see it snap back at him? Okay, let's see if someone else will try to control him. Because it can do it. Oh, it can do it once every 1.5 seconds. And if if he's getting this from female Ho, he's also getting healed and attack speed. So talking about synergy, that could be a potentially really awesome synergy. Though, let's be real. Female Ho synergizes well with just about anything and everything these days i think so let's give it another shot here paying attention to that i don't know how his attacks are when he gets the double damage if it's like the overhand attack or if like it's a different type of swing because uh, there's like a side swipe and i think an overhead attack one of those there it was see that overhead attack i don't know which one is double damage but we'll look Oh, that is double damage. So when he does the overhand swing, no, it's not. Oh, it's really hard to tell. I was looking though. But yeah, this is a great synergy right here. Um, anything that can, his his life steal is good. It'll supplement. But I really do think him having a healer is what he really needs the most. Someone that just kind of babies him a little bit here. Boom, look at that. It hit four of their champs. Remember, 500% strength. That's 2,000 from that active with a stun while going to the back of the lowest uh, champ. Oh, yeah, don't forget the max, uh, max con damage. So, come on, let's see a, a repost. I want to see one. Look, he just keeps using this alt and slamming this hand down. I love it. It's really cool. Um, so, boom. That active is cool. That slide back behind him. And, you know, if they're going to do it that way, uh, GOAT developers, at least tell us you're going to do it that way. Don't say go to the back of the weakest target. Just say go to the back of the target. Like, that'll make it easier for us, I think. Because... Right now, we're we're really confused because the wording in a lot of these alts doesn't line up with what ends up happening. Then it doesn't get fixed. All right, there's the active slides behind the current target. And then um, here comes the alt, the hand down. Let's see if he reposts it all. Come on, someone tr tried to CC. There it was. See the hand that went shoving? It's like you were denied. There it went again. Oh, yeah. So I think in PvP, this guy... There went a third time. In PvP, this guy's alt is going to be so strong. Because can we reiterate what it does? Um, it does a huge amount of damage, first off. And then after that... We'll, we'll go ahead and go to max level skill just to kind of show you again. So look at this. Um... It, the control, first of all, he gets control immunity from that ability. Uh, suffers, it will be nullified. And I, I don't know if that includes the damage from whatever that was, too, which I think it does. It gives him attack speed by 35%. Remember with the female hose passive, he basically had his ult going the whole time. So that's 35% attack speed extra the whole time. Not to mention female ho gives i think 25 percent attack speed or something with her passive uh, i i forget but it's really good each attack of the dharma's image deals damage equal to 600 percent 
of the caster's strength, uh, plus additional damage to 18% of the target's max con to all enemies within range, up to 2,000% of the caster's strength. That to all targets within range. So, like, everybody that gets hit with the fist, everybody that gets hit with the slam, uh, the palm down slam, they all take that max con damage. It's not current con damage, it's max. So it's like always going to be huge. And don't forget, his normal attacks are doing double damage. They're ignoring fortitude. He's gaining life steal and strength. Like this is a strong, strong champion. And don't forget, he's inflicting the stun. Every time he uses his active, he's inflicting stun. That triggers uh, Mail Water and Sun's passive, which is always something we're all looking to do if you want to put it in your Mail Water and Sun's. So, um, his ult doesn't stun anybody, but you don't really need to. It just does tons of damage. And again, it can proc up to six times. Six times in, in nine seconds. And, and think about that. If he's got the female hoe and he's got plenty of energy where his ult is constantly on... Basically, every 1.5 seconds, he's hitting him for a ton of damage. So, uh, and max health damage. This guy is so good. Like, I'll, I'll probably be leveling him because with the Akunas, I kind of failed. I, but I really do. Once I get her to Mythic, I want to level her up because I see a ton of potential for her. She basically just adds up the damage. And she, like, similar again to the female Akuna, who as the battle goes on, she gets stronger and stronger and heavier and heavier until she just pops and destroys everybody. Um, ask Becca. And this, this one, I think, has the same potential. But, um, all right. So let's, should we talk about a little, some synergies right now? I think that that's appropriate. So... Let's go ahead and talk about some synergies. We'll go back to that list. Okay. So anything that adds attack speed for the male is going to be good. So somebody I can think right off the top of my head is the male Silken Crown. He adds a lot of attack speed. He has healing as well. That would really help with the male Monkey King. Uh, anyone that adds attack speed, so that's female lion stone, who's going to also add strength, and so it increases that max. All the damage that the male is doing is going off the chart. Um, who else? The male Akuna is doing more CC, which is fine, but this Shun male mostly just wants that attack speed, amplifying in, uh, the the enemies. Um, damage that they take. Uh, so think about female Kavak too, who throws her um, spears with her active, and that all applies uh, um, impaired. And so they're taking more damage from that. That's a really nice combo as well. Uh, male Corbett goes well with anybody. And don't forget, he gives everybody his passive buff, which increases their they drain strength from their opponents. And the more strength this Monkey King has, the better like he's going to do. So, um, and then uh, with the Bjorn Krieger, um, the male has the stun, so that'll be amplified by the male Polar Bear's ultimate. And so that would be helpful as well. And then also when people take or shivered when they get stunned or whatever, they take amplified damage as well. So that combined with the male monkeys just damage output could be really, really nice. Um, uh, female Silken Crown could pull enemies in uh, and get them situated uh, next to the monkey. Because his active is so powerful. If you have the entire enemy team stacked up, that monkey is just going to make, lay waste just with his active, not to mention his alt. Because anytime someone hits him with a control effect, he's going to hit the whole team with his ultimate every time. So um, with that, I would say the female polar bear 
would be a fantastic combo with this guy because she's pulling people in. She's reducing fortitude by a ton. Um, she just would compliment him quite a bit because he would be just smacking the palm down on top like all the time. And again, he'd be stunning them all with his active. It would be great. Oh, man. I want to level her. I think she might be the next warrior I level. Fun champion. And I want to level the male Silken Crown. I, I like him a lot. My female Almat's pretty quick, getting close, so she would be really nice. Um, I think that she would go really well with the female monkey. The reason why is um, she does insane single target damage, and she does max health. So if you're amplifying this damage from the female monkey with her active and her clones are all casting the active and if it's on the same champ it, it it stacks so then so as soon as that active goes off they take extra damage and if you have a female alma hitting somebody that has that on them guaranteed they're going to take a load of extra damage so i think that's a really good combo uh same with the male i i i don't have much on the male so i I want to get them. I want to level them. Uh, the female Thunderlord, I want to level her too. But I just, there's a lot of champs that I haven't gotten around to. But uh, one thing I wanted to look at was the female hose passive. It is um, attack speed by 25% and 250 energy over 5 seconds. And up to 12% of their max con heal. Um, which is better, of course, for tanks or anything like that that you might need. To. Female line done with high health, and you want her. The only issue is, yeah, she wants the attack speed, she wants the energy, and she wants the um, uh, health, uh, the max health. So that all works great for her. Um, so I mentioned the female Estereer would go really well with the female monkey. Because they both extend the battle. They just make it longer, uh, harder to kill. Because um, the female Shun has her uh, passive. So three times she delays by five seconds. So that's 15 seconds there. And then the Estereer, she's got her ult, which can go off multiple times. And here would be a good question. When the decoys die or fade... Does that trigger any of the death effects? Because if that's the case, female Estereer would be immortal, essentially, as those clones die. So uh, maybe we can experiment with that a little bit. Um, that would be interesting. I have a low-level female Estereer, uh, if you recall from the Estereer release video. Um, who else? I think the male Warbringer would be amazing with the male monkey just because he isolates somebody that everyone can kind of just focus on or actually probably better for the female because uh, then all of her clones are coming in and just rocking oh this is going to be so fun i can't wait to do some uh, arena battles here so with that being said let's go ahead and make make a couple low level groups to test in the arena here all right so Athena's got a good team. Let's see what we can build here against her. Um, all right. And so I did say I wanted to use my female hoe. And she's great just strategically anyway. So I like that. So there's the male. We'll bring in the male Estereer. Because he does pretty well. So look, we're trying to keep the Monkey King's... Just alt going constantly if we can. Let's put in the female Galabar. How are we looking on power? Okay, we're trying to... And then let's round it out a little bit. I would put in the female monkey, but not ready for that yet. Let's do another... We're kind of going healer strong here, so... How, how does that put us? Oh, that puts me a little over. Let's not do that then. Um... Okay, we mentioned female Alma. Let's try that out. All right. And actually, this is a weird thing. I'm going to do this. 
because I feel the monkey, when he gets the immunity from the male esterier, he doesn't get any crowd control effects on him. So he wastes his ult. So we don't want that. So instead, I'm going to put him in the back to get the female ho benefit of the high spirited from female ho, which is plus strength for the first 10 seconds. All right, here we go. Esther Rear comes in. He's putting, where's, oh, whoa. Uh, my female Amat's pretty close to death. Esther Rear's garden, female Amat. And looks like the monkey's holding up so far, I think. I want to see the monkey's alt, like, shoot at the male water and sun. Oh, it just smashed right there. Oh, but he's dying quick. He's dying. That male... Oh, the male water and sun. It's hard for me to tell what the heck's going on. Okay, male Esther here went into his block and was able to come out. And then we got female Galabar. Come on, female Galabar. What do you got? Nope, she's dead. Okay, good job, Athena. That was really good. Um... I'm going to have to go a little lower. Liana's got a really good team, but I just... I need to see how this champion functions a little better. So we'll take that champ out. We'll put this champ in. And the shake them all about. And we'll take out Mel Esterier, and actually we'll put back in female Galabar. There we go. That looks pretty good. Maybe like this. Like this. Okay. Here we go. And who are we going to fight? Liana. Oh no, I got to rebuild my team. Sorry, everybody. There's the male Lume. Is it like this? Yeah, we'll go with it. All right, here we go. Liana, good luck. She's probably got a really strong um, Scarlet. Everyone does her. Really strong Phoenix. All right, there's the monkey. He slammed. Let's see if he gets crowd controlled and it slams back. I bet he will. Come on. Oh, did he just slam again? Here comes the Scarlet. Scarlet's going to destroy him. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. Everyone has really strong Scarlets. Oh, he got resurrected by Mel Lume. Oh, what a what a surprise. Oh, and his ult is going down. Look how fast he's attacking too. He's just going he's going off the chain. Someone needs to try to CC him. I want to see how that works. I want to see the hand. Here goes. So, if someone, oh, the hand just went down. Now let's see if it punishes anybody with a repost. Uh, oh man, that was a pleasant surprise. Oh, there was one right there. Tried to get CC'd and sent back at him. I th I thought it would it would proc more often because so many people have CCs on their team. Oh, there was one right there. You can see the char on the ground after it goes forward. There goes another one. Jeez. Yeah, and remember that does a ton of damage every time he does the the Dharma does that. It's crazy. There's female ho, and bam. Wow. Good fight. Nicely done. That was insane. Uh, good job, Liana. All right, let's do Gia Dochan. All right. Oh, this is going to be tough. Male water and sun. And I'm going to have to... Okay, I'm going to have to kind of keep the team as is because I can't really substitute anyone else. Um, I guess we can try the male Esther here. It's just going to make me slightly more powerful than you. I'm sorry. Or how about this? What if we slap in the female too? It's not too bad. Um, what about if I do that? There we go. Is that good? You feel satisfied with that? All right, we're going to keep the thing going to the... And we'll put her up front. 
give her some early strength to be able to drain some more life. All right, here we go. Good luck, Gia. So the male runs up. Oh, did you see that? His active. Oh, and then he used his ult right there. Let's see if anyone tries to CC him. If they do, he's going to fight back pretty hard. There goes the water and sun. Oh, the, both of them are dead. That takes the fun out of this fight. Bummer. And I think they'll be able to get get me. I don't know, though. These are some pretty tough champs that they're fighting hand in hand here. Because they're both healers, too. Look at this. This could be a, a long battle here. Oh, there goes the lion. Oh, okay, everything's going to happen right now. Oh, there goes... The, oh, nicely done, Gia. You rocked me. I probably shouldn't be wasting these, but... All right, Staz 64. da 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 da, -da, -da. Da, 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 da. There we go. Let's try that. I gave myself a little advantage because I would like to win to get those items for the event. I could use some more gems. All right. So the male uses active. He jumped in, uses his ult, smashes people. Uh oh. This is good. he's going to get assassinated by the soul keeper. I bet that's a bummer. Um. Hopefully, you got the resurrection on him. I don't know about that, though. Nope, not fast enough. And get destroyed. Yeah, it's that Soul Keeper. It's tough to test new champions against an enemy with the male Soul Keeper because he just assassinates them when they get low life so they don't get the chance. And they're, they're already low level when you're kind of testing them. So it's... uh. That's kind of why I don't like to normally fight people when I'm testing that have... Like, I like Melt Water in the Sun because you're always going to go against them, but the, but the other options aren't that good. Okay, here we go. Here's something similar. Let's try this one. There, you got a little advantage over me. But I'm kind of tired of losing here, so I'm going to throw in a little friend... Not too much stronger, but you'll probably beat me. All right, good luck. Monkey's active. It does the stun. Uh, okay, look how quick he got that ult off. Um, here, uh oh, here comes this. There, go, nice. I hope that stun stopped the scarlet. Oh, it didn't. But the monkey had a couple reposts there, I think. During that craziness. And he's still staying alive. Especially with female Ho healing him up. Um, male Lume has the Ash Mane's ult on him. Oh, there goes the monkey getting the ult, the Dharma back out. Oh, you saw the... Oh, there goes multiple reposts from it. Like each of these control effects, this, this Dharma is fighting back. And really, there goes another one. Look, the Dharma just hit again. And then he actives and jumps to the back of his current target. It would be better if it was the weakest target. So there's the active again with the stun. Oh, they got a Mel Galabar. So we'll really see how this is going to go. Trying to outlast me. I got gotcha. you. Esterir kind of soaking up some damage, giving some crowd control. Oh, that active from the monkey. Finished that right there. Now they got an, a Galabar who's just nuts. The only chance we have is the Esterir. Uh, no. Oh, oh that, that rock. There we go. Uh, let's look at damage. There's that monkey doing a ton. I mean, he didn't have any competition really, but that's, that's a lot of damage right there. And look how much damage he took. So you got to remember... He's going to be in there soaking it up, so he kind of needs a little support. Um, that's the best I can I can think of it. Uh, let's head over to Valley. I saved up some activity points to see if we can 
uh, get a couple decent fights uh, so we can do some testing. <laughs> Nobody at that gate. No. Somebody's here at the shrine. Who is it? Hannibal. That's a tough group. I wouldn't be able to. The problem is Monkey dies from all the real powerful people. That's... that's whoa, there's 16 enemies here. With Jadesh. They probably have the, the middle, too. That's one of the... Oh, not too much here. Hey. Let's see what I can do. I think I was playing around with this team. We'll get some good footage here. I, I don't have the monkey in it, but that's okay. Just just hang tight for a second. So we'll give this a go. I'll try to get this back before we take on that entire full gate. Hannibal, good luck. Hannibal's a really good player. I die to Hannibal most of the time, but I, I tried to make this this current team that I'm showing you like pretty powerful. Instead of making all three of my teams kind of even, I just tried to make this team. Oh, whoa. Hannibal just destroyed me. Wow. Okay. Well, that's, that's what we got for that. <laughs> Uh, let me see if I can make something with the Monkey King real quick. Maybe come down here, see if Purple has something. Oh, no, Seto Kibi is really strong. Yeah, can't really test new champions in here. Uh, let's see if there's anybody around here that's lower level. Sometimes people use lower level teams to kind of clean up their, their side of the map. Mm -hmm. Oh, who do we got here? Paladina. Nope, that's got melt water and sun. Um, actually, I got a really good idea. This Paladina's main group, though. Okay, here, let's try this out. See the second group? Oh, no. Okay, I've already used my female hoe. He's normally part of this group. Hmm. Let's do this. And then where's the monkey, monkey, monkey? There he is. So let's have him in here. As well as female Galabar. How's that look? I don't think we're going to have enough damage. But let's see if we can support that monkey enough. To see if he can even stay alive. That's the real question. Alright. So wh where are we going? We're going after Paladina. So I can come on. Slide on up in here. Alright Paladina. I got a weaker. I got a weaker champ here. So I'm at least. Since they have Archon. I'm at least going to take their fortitude. Um. It's not the better stat, but it will maybe help with this battle a little bit since they have the shrine advantage. Um, all right, Paladina, here we go. What do we got right here? Is this a, another champ? Nope. All right, Paladina, put your dukes up. <clears throat> Big difference in power. I'm punching up, but we'll see what we got here. They're male Askevarg charging in. Oh, they got the male Bloom kind of attacking everybody. The monkey's staying alive for now. There's his ult. He just slammed. I think the Dharma came out. Nope. He's getting male water and sun all over the place. Yep. He didn't last special. Oh, there's the Soul Reaper, of course. I should have expected that. I, I think I told you I just didn't have enough damage, which makes sense. Um... Yeah, and this group's stacked, too. Good job, Paladina. I'm not even putting a uh, a dent on people here. And the male soul uh, reaper just keeps going around and taking everybody out one by one. Jeez, my, my male polar bear's up there, though, giving them hell. Boom! Oh, male water and sun pulsing. This could be it. There's the stun. Did he get him to stop? 
Oh, here comes the male. Or did we kill them? No, male soul keeper reaper still there full, full everything. Oh, ate up my male Acuna. There's the stun again, but it is not enough. Hey, look how long this battle lasted, though. Look at the power difference. Um, about 40 million and how long that battle lasted. If I just would have had, I, if that monkey would have been level 700, I would have won that. No doubt in my mind. Um, and then maybe we could see if there's a battle we can try the female monkey. Just so y'all can get a little idea. It's a skewed idea, but it, I wanted to get more content. For the video. Alright. See if there's any weaklings up here. I, I asked in global. Oops. I asked in global chat earlier. If people would play with their weaker teams. So that I could. Test out the. Shun clan. But. That does not appear to be the case. Alright. So did we find anything up here? I don't think so. Nope. And I can't really get through. Can't really get through here. Yeah, Jadesh is up at the top there. Come on. Get a little lag. Okay, I don't think there's anyone that we can... That was Sato Kibi. I don't think there's anyone we can really fight. Which is a bummer. I wanted to show you the female. Alright, so we'll just go against someone that's tough. So the female's more of a kind of a, a longer living tank. Uh, we'll try this. So we got our healer in here. And I have high spirited on my female limestone, so that should complement. Level 360! <laughs> this is going to go poorly. But we'll give it a shot. I think, I think we've got some potential here. Oh. Something I told y'all I was going to do. There we go. I don't want to go against Hannibal. I don't want to go against any of these people. But I must. For the sake of video. Jadesh, I'm coming for you. With 137 million team against your... Uh, 190 million, whatever it was. Yeah, so. Let's see, maybe the female just surprises everybody. Remember, I wanted to check out those five second things. Oh, there's a male ask of arg. okay. Where's, how's the female doing? Does anyone even see her right now? <laughs> okay, she's kind of down towards the bottom right now. Uh... My male Bloom's having a hard time. He did not stay alive. Hey, she's still up. Hey, she's the final champion on the team to stay alive. And remember, that makes sense because the um, she's got those three stages where she becomes, you know, gets the five seconds and vulnerability. So that's just remember that for teams that you're going to be building, that she has that ability. Yeah, I wish I had one up at level 700. That'd make this way more entertaining. Um, we'll go ahead and do a couple more arena matches. Maybe against some players and just kind of have the, yeah, like Muffmeister. Let's kind of create a team. We'll use the male. And remember, we wanted to give him the female hoe. We'll do a male ask of our get up there really quick. Get up in their grill. 
because we need to take out that male water and sun pretty annoying so we'll we'll send in the male corbett and then we'll get a little plus hit and some strength with the female selfos all right i don't know oh really close in power so let's give this a shot good luck Muffmeister. Doesn't have Bolko. Oh, we're at times two here. So there goes the monkey with the hand palm slam. He's got the Dharma up. Their male polar bear just you tried to use his ult. I don't know if it went off. Okay, there goes female Sophos, but my monkey just died. Uh, but we did take out their male water and sun. Um, but the Phoenix is still raining down the ultimate in the, up at top. It's a bummer. We don't have the monkey. It was just too much. We got the, we got the win. It looks like, but the uh, monkey didn't last long enough. I wish that go games would just give me a 15 star of both the current champs so I could do proper videos and do proper team synergies. And that'd be pretty nice. Nobara Kugisaki Ezra has um, the dang male Soul Keeper. Again, it's hard to test when people have the Soul Keeper. All right, let's go with some ores action here. Uh, we'll try the same setup, but let's do something a little bit more defensive instead of female Selfos. And it'll bring the power levels a little bit more in line. So, we'll do something like this. So, he'll also protect the monkey a little bit more. We'll see if the protection does what we need it to do. Askavar gets him up there quick. Esterir puts protection on the monkey. Monkey's already using his ultimate. Slammed his hand down. And he's attacking really fast. He's got the crown over his head. So, he's got extra strength, extra... Oh. Monkey's really low. Monkey's really low. Someone heal monkey. Female ho might get the heal off. Oh, God, I'm saved him. So, oh, his ult just did the repost. It just pushed back. That was really cool. He's about to ult again, so the hand slaps down, does some good damage. Um, there goes my male Corbett, getting some dancing going. Oh, there was the hand repost, and then he used his ult again, and it slammed down. That was a lot of damage. So let's check damage here. Let's scope it out. Look at that. Monkey and male Cor He tied the male Corbett. And guess what? Male Corbett's level 700. Look at what level monkey is. 400. Almost double his level. And monkey's able to keep up in damage. Now granted, he does take a lot of... He takes a lot. He tanks a lot. But having like an Estereer, a female hoe... Um, Malakuna, somebody to kind of support him. That's really helpful. That was a good battle. Good job, Muff. All right, let's find somebody who, again, doesn't have the dang. All right, no male soul keeper. Here, who was this? Gamelthor, get ready. We're coming at you. Same setup. All right. No times two. Male Askavarg brings everybody up quick. The monkey has the protective shield from Esterir. And then, oh, he's already ulted. Slammed down and killed their phoenix. Male Corbett uses his ult. And the whole time, monkey's just popping away with that above. Oh, wow. Uh, he was immune to the control. And the Dharma shot back when the female Galabar. Look, look at the damage. Almost there with Mel Corbett yet again. Wow, this guy has some potential. I think it's just AoE is so strong. And a lot of... Um, Vruma, do you have a... Oh, this is going to be a tough match for me here. Vruma's really tough. I'll probably lose this even though I'm punching down. But, uh, according to Might anyways. So here we go. I get in there. Esther is going to put the shield on my... The male used his active, and he's he's up in there. 
My male Corbett is on their male water and sun. Esterir just put his alt on the um, the monkey, which should help. Oh, the monkey just killed the male water and sun with a repost. That was so good. Oh, that was awesome. Good job, Bruma. What do we got? Oh, my goodness. My male Ascovar went to town. But, mm. And look at the healing done from the monkey, from his lifesteal. He had more healing than, like, the whole team. He's in there. He's in the thick of things. I love it. Cool champ. Did we fight you, Athena? I forgot. But you don't have a Soul Reaper, so I'm going to go at you one more time. Sorry if it, if it bugs you. All right. There's my male Ascovarg taking us in. Male Corbett's going to use his active. Oh, the monkey got hit pretty hard right at the beginning, but he got the Estereer shield. He's frozen from the male Akuna. Uh-oh, their Corbett just killed him. Dropped rain. Might have killed my whole team, actually. Female Ho just keeping up the male Ascovarg. But we might get the male Estereer back in. Yep, he's back in the fray. My male Corbett's trying to keep us up. Oh, female Ho just got assassinated. And their male water and sun is just going to clean up here. Male Estereer, sorry, your frozen block's not going to save you. Good job. Athena, strong team. But, oh, yeah, my monkey died really quick. Didn't even have enough time to really ramp up, get some damage in. My male Corbett did well. Good job, Athena. Who else? Who else? Oh, this is a good one. Unless he's got it up. He's got his soul reaper in. It's just a bummer for me. I just can't fight teams with the soul reaper. And different teams I go against are different against different champions. Like, every, every different champion adds a, a different element to your team. So you just have to, I, that's why I love this game. It's it has some nice combinations of different champs and what you can do with them and their clan traits. It's uh, really fun. I forget, Ors, do you, did we fight you already, Ors? I forget. I'm going to go at you again, though, because we're pretty close in power. And I just want to see if this male can can do what I need him to do. Okay. He just. Oh, he tried to use it. Okay, used his active, got back. Now he just used his hand to slam down on the Phoenix and, the, oh no, the male water and sun. My male Corbett came down to prevent the ult. Uh-oh, here comes the Scarlet and the male water and sun, though. Killed my monkey. Uh, Esserir is staying up pretty good. Male Corbett's kind of leading the way. He came back to my back row stupidly. He's on an illusion, just wasting his time right now. Oh, and he wasted his ult on the male Bloom illusion. That sucks. <laughs> well, he's, he thinks he's... Oh, there goes male Escarir, though. He was able to ult. Uh, male Corbett back in the back line against female Selfos. And there's the win. Good fight, Ors. That was a, a 40, almost 40-second fight. That was good. That was fun. All right. So I think that's what I got there. Let's kind of talk about traits a little bit. Let's talk about what you think would go well on these champions. Um, let's start with the male. So his attack, every three attacks to get his enhancement um you definitely want attack speed so agile is a good one if you don't have anyone else to carry rapid shot you could also put rapid shot on him um brutal is essential because he's heavily strength based uh maybe even going with steadfast and because he's just in the middle of the whole battle so instead of cutthroat i would go steadfast or i will go steadfast I'll get my Brutal to 22, so that Steadfast is also a really big shield. Um, I might keep the Honorable on him, just while I'm getting him vigored up and just trying to get him 
get them placed because honorable is helpful in those situations. But if his survivability from his ultimate is decent, like the the retaliation nullifying the control attack, then I might instead of honorable go aggressive just to build up his strength a little bit more, which will help his steadfast. It'll help like two of his three abilities, I think. Maybe even all three. Actually, it'll help all three. Because dealing double damage, ignoring fortitude, uh, strength increased even more there. So yeah, for him, I think that's what I'll go. But you could also, if you just want to... Um, fierce would be really good. Uh, the only reason why I like the aggressive and the strength boost is... Well, honestly, you get life steal, so fierce might do better than honorable or aggressive. So, brutal or steadfast, brutal, fierce, and agile is will be my final build on him. I think that's nice. And then, don't forget his ability to do extra critical damage. You could put eagle eye on him, and eagle eye goes up to 10% extra critical rate. So he would just be landing more criticals, and every time he lands a more critical, his critical damage will be even higher. So that could be an option instead of the fierce, if you kind of want more burst damage, because that's what the crit thing will do. Um, what else could you do? Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I went over what I would get for him. The female is going to be a bit different, though. So, it all depends. Her illusions have her skills and her base stats. I don't think it has any traits that can proc, though I'm going to do some testing off that. So, for me, I would build her like a tank, but while also having brutal. So, maybe just the whole brutal, steadfast, aggressive... Um, so you're getting bigger shields, and it helps amplify some of her abilities. Um, and I don't know if the illusions will get the steadfast, how that'll affect them. That could be really interesting. Um, I like honorable honor uh, to go with that. The only thing I would probably do agile for is um, maybe getting faster energy so she can keep getting her clones and if her clones get the agile if that's considered part of the base stats then that's even better because that'll work uh and then don't forget yeah i, I do like the brutal honor just because how her abilities work if she's attacking those targets they'll just take extra damage when the active uh turns off or goes off so yeah, that's kind of the situation. Or you could even give her a group buff, though it might be a waste of a slot, really, for her. Because she has a lot of potential. Um, another thing could be potentially energetic, just due to when the champion's constitution is lower than 80, 50, or 20%. And that means those will just be at higher numbers if you have uh, energetic with the percent max con higher um so those are some options uh ch -ch -ch -ch. but again if the traits work out that like fearsome works from her clones you better bet that i'm gonna put that on her because i think that would be fantastic that would be a ton of stuns no one would be able to stop all the stuns that she's throwing at them yeah, so that's the Escarir, uh, or not the Escarir, that's the Shun clan. Um, I think that they're a really good one, and if I had enough stones, I would get the Mythic female, and I would work on leveling both of them, because I think they're both fantastic. The male, to me, is more, I can fit him in a couple teams right now, and I think he would do really well. Not to mention, I've kind of been working on PvE a little bit, and doing really well with it. And I think he would add a lot to that, just due to the max con damage that he does all the time. And you mix that with the female hoe, and my female hoe has the rapid shot, and he has the agile, so it's like this. And then she's throwing the passive on him for the 25% attack speed, 
it's pretty crazy. So I'm thinking about putting like him with Romulus, uh, female Lionstone, female Ho, just really trying to maybe even not female Ho because my female Lionstone has rapid shot as well. So just using female Lionstone with the monkey, with Romulus, with uh, um, maybe Phoenix or Mel Segarak or Mel Corbett, just getting that extra strength drain. The monkey would benefit a ton from that. So those are all some options that you can do. Um, such a cool clan. I hope everybody gets a chance to, to get this companion and to level them up and really enjoy them. I think they're fun to watch. I like the giant palm and the dharma's attacks. I like seeing all the multiplicity from the female. And remember, I think she'd go really well with Mel Bloom. Just illusions and clones everywhere. What can you do? They're swarming the battlefield. Uh, yeah, especially anything that amplifies their damage or them in some way. So if you notice, when female Ho used her ult... She got all the illusions, which is really cool. So that heals them all. They take less damage over time. It hits the entire team, so it hit them all. It was really cool. So uh, anyhow, yeah, there's a lot of options. And hopefully this has helped you maybe make a decision between the two. What's going to fit your uh, maybe primary team the best or one of your uh, secondary or tertiary team. Uh, we do progressively need three strong teams so finding where this guy can slot into a team he's just he's got the role of heavy damage uh, a little bit of cc the ability to amplify damage quite a bit do max con damage that's really awesome she uh, she multiplies so she can distract the battle probably live really long too might be good in a timeout team um a lot, of, a lot of options for her, um, depending. Um, so we're going to have to come up with some neat combos. Uh, but leave your comments if, if you're going to go for the male or female. If so, which one? Um, tell me about what you think you're going to combo them up with, what you're kind of aiming for. And it's just nice because we do have a lot of assassins already. So the Guardian Stones, mine do, reflect some really good stuff for assassins. So that really helps out. Uh, I need to up the plus hit to hit because that would help with the monkey because you don't want to miss him. If you can give him gear that has the plus hit stones in it too, he would just be unstoppable. Um, but anyhow, great clan, great, great monkeys. Um, if you like this video, give it a like. If you like what I put out, give it a subscribe. And if you want to know right when these hit YouTube, then hit the little bell notification. It uh, allows you to see my stuff right as I get it out. And But you still have all week. I'm trying to get this out earlier. So you should have all week to decide what you want to summon, if you want to summon, and which one you want to kind of go for. But that's why I do these trials for everybody, so that you can make better decisions based off of what you see here, what we talk about. Um, so, again, thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, this is Gnome. I'll see you in the next one.